Good morning. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day. He's blessed us with another opportunity to gather together to worship Him because we, we want to do that because He's blessed us especially with a beautiful gospel of a risen and victorious Savior. God's blessings once again as you come together to worship Him. We'll begin by singing the first hymn, hymn number 444. invite you to stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also we have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin 
and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. risen Lord, you came to your disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by word and sacrament and banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. attention now for our scripture readings this first Sunday after uh, the Easter <coughs> celebration, each of which will provide us with an historical, accurate account of an appearance of Jesus to others. The gentlemen that wrote these accounts are either telling us the truth or they are perpetuating a lie, which would make them the most despicable men probably of all time, because it would have, it did lead those who believed in their message to risk their very lives for this message. But we know that it is true, that Jesus did appear to others, and therefore we can be sure by the testimony of those others that he has risen from the grave and is our victorious Savior. We begin with Luke's account in Acts 18. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord. And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believe and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. 
for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. And this is the word of God. We continue with him number 455. Our second reading is recorded by the Apostle John, who also testifies to the fact that he saw and spent time with the risen Savior Jesus. From 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life, the life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. The word of the Lord. to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson today is recorded in St. John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning with verse 19. This will also serve as the text for the sermon today. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, 
peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Please be seated as we sing hymn 456, stanzas 1 through 4, and then 8. In the name of Christ, our victorious, risen Savior, our personal Savior, and the Savior of the entire world, dear friends. I wish we didn't call him Doubting Thomas. 
I get it. That label has been assigned or ascribed to him for centuries. Jesus actually said in our text, stop doubting. Although even there, I don't know, when a guy says, unless I actually see it, I will not believe. That's not average, ordinary doubt there. I will not believe. And he certainly was not in a good place. It's not in a good place to say that to your friends, your fellow disciples, who have just reported to you that they saw it. What are you, what are you saying about them, Thomas? They're lying? But still, I just wish we didn't call him that, because that does not define him. And do we have to label people anyway? Should we call Peter denying Peter? Why don't we call him denying Peter? Or maybe James and John, thundering James. Thundering John, because there was a time where they spoke out like that. Sons of thunder, they were called. But he's doubting Thomas. Well, Doubting Thomas is someone that we can relate to. Maybe for that reason, because we also, at times in our life, are given to doubt and to fear. But he's someone that we can relate to for an even greater reason. He is someone that our Savior Jesus ministered to personally who brought him around so that he like the other disciples gathered in that room that night could go into the world and testify to the truth that Jesus is our Lord and our God this is what doubting Thomas cried out right after his loving Savior gave him the, the evidence. My Lord and my God. That's our Jesus. My Lord and my God. That's our Jesus. And that is our faith. The fact that Jesus made these appearances on the first Sunday night to the 11 that were there, plus maybe a few others, Thomas not there, reappearing again a week later to them, including Thomas, appearances he made to this group of guys for the period of 40 days, basically, before he ascended, eating with them, hanging out with them, and then the appearances to others, 500 unnamed souls at one time. Paul, his brother James, all of those appearances. For one thing, gave evidence that Jesus is indeed our Lord and God. Because if he had not risen from the grave, Really, he, he would not be our Lord and God. He would have been the most despicable human being that's ever lived. Because he came and told people, I am God. I am that Messiah that's been prophesied for thousands of years. All of those sacrifices, all of those lambs, they were all about me. And now here I am. Listen to me. Follow me. All of that would have been a lie. It would have all been for nothing had he not risen from the grave. He would have been another martyr that many people, no doubt, would have respected, loved his words. This is a very popular view of Jesus in our world today. Great teacher. Some of his sayings are some of the best ever said. 
Yeah, but he said he was God. And he said that by going through the suffering and death that he did, that this would win salvation for all mankind. His appearances gave evidence of the truth that he rose from the grave, and therefore, everything that he ever said is trustworthy. It also gave evidence that his father approved of his son's work. His father made the plan. Someone had to be perfect. Someone had to die. And by raising him to life, he showed, I accept his sacrifice. It worked. But his appearances to men like Thomas and Peter and the others, those 500 at one time, they also equipped those men and women because they would be the eyewitnesses to the world of this most glorious truth that Jesus lives, that he came out of the grave. And along with that came the assurance of a peace that is only found in that gospel message of our risen Savior Jesus. A peace that you and I crave as we deal with the constant onslaught of guilt and shame for our constant sinning. As we maybe look for peace of mind and heart as we continue to live out our lives in a world that is filled with so much lack of peace, the constant threat of evil, a peace that we crave when we too are huddled either with a loved one or all by ourselves in fear, fear that can be caused by threats around us, but maybe also fear because of what we know is true within us. My Lord and my God, that's our Jesus. He is our Lord and God because he rose victorious from the grave. And he brings us real and lasting peace. And so men like Thomas and Peter and the others, they would be the first to proclaim that message of peace. And our Jesus equip them to do that by going to them. And you notice in our text, he didn't just suddenly appear to them, which shows his divine nature, his, his power, but the first thing he does is says, look at my hands and my feet and my side. I was on that cross. And now here I am again. What I did there that day, that you saw, that has brought about forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. And there is no doubt about it. So I wish we didn't label him Doubting Thomas. Other guys didn't get labels. It seems unfair to take one moment in a person's life and then create a label for them because of that one moment. Yes, he wasn't in a good place. I wonder why he wasn't with the other 11 that first time. They were all in that room living out in fear. Where was he? Was he walking the streets of Jerusalem? Not in fear? We don't know that. But we do know that Jesus came to him on purpose and spoke directly to Thomas because he knew where he was at. 
He knew that Thomas was craving evidence. Whether that is excusable or not, Jesus knew it, and he gave it to him. To Thomas personally, look, touch, stop doubting and believe. There can be all kinds of reasons for doubt. Something shakes up your world in an instant. Where did this come from? And it can just create doubt. Everything that I thought was going to be the case, and now it's all gone. There can be a pattern of behavior that leads to doubt. Maybe a continual distancing of oneself. Maybe that's what happened with Thomas. Maybe that's why he wasn't with the other guys. A distancing of yourself from the word, from fellowship with others who are in the faith, can start to open the door to doubt. We've known that feeling too. We know the feeling of fear because things are out of our control and we would rather they were within our control. So Jesus made it personal with Thomas. He brought him around. And Jesus makes it personal with you too. He has brought us around through the power of the gospel message in word and sacrament, starting already with our baptisms, He knows where we're at right now, today. He knows our doubts and fears. And he uses that word to calm them, to soothe them, to bring us peace. He uses the words of those who proclaim that word just as he used men like Thomas and Peter and others who wrote it down, many of them, for us to have today. And because he rose victorious from the grave, he has given each of you personally to all of us promises that we know will be kept. No temptation will seize you that is beyond what you can bear. I am with you always. Come to me in the day of trouble. Call upon me. I will deliver you. And then you will honor me. On and on they go including the promise that I've gone to prepare a place for you. And one day I'm going to come and take you to be with me in that place in heaven. It's a relationship that leaves no doubt. This is our faith. That come what may in this earthly life, the doubts, the fears, the sadnesses, the setbacks, Jesus is there with us to bless us and to hold us close to him. And so now, this is our label, as it was with Thomas. Child of God, trusting Lamb, following believer, heir of eternal life. According to history, tradition, maybe maybe some legend, Thomas went all the way to India to spread the word of a risen victorious Savior. The other guys, they went far and wide too, although some of them got martyred very soon in their ministry. But imagine that in those days, all the way to India. There still are today in India references to the visit of St. Thomas. In fact, there's some speculation he might have gotten all the way to what is today China. He too was martyred, run through by a spear according to legend. 
But the man who once said, unless I see it, I will not believe. His Jesus brought him around and made use of him. Where will you and I go with that same gospel message? We'll go here to come together in praise of that gospel message of a risen Savior. We'll go down the hallway and make sure that our young people have the opportunity to hear it as well. We may personally go elsewhere, maybe to our neighbors' homes, out on the streets of the neighborhoods of our community, and together with other fellow Christians in our church body, we'll go to the ends of the earth. We have gone to India. <laughs> We've gone to China and Japan and Latin America and beyond because we want more and more souls to come to faith, to know that there is real peace in the risen, victorious Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that because that work is about that gospel, it will be blessed. There is no doubt about it. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand again as we confess our Christian faith. We will use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Lord of life, fill our hearts with joy during this season, for you have risen and conquered the grave. Imprint the message of victory on our hearts and implant it in our minds. Through the good news of your resurrection, renew our hope and revive our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By baptizing us into your name, you have connected us to your death and rising. You have put our sin to death and have given us a new life. Enable us each day to think of ourselves as dead to sin and alive to you, so that we may walk in newness of life in all we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this fallen world, death and sorrow surround us. Touch the hearts of those who grieve the loss of a Christian they love. Direct their eyes to your empty tomb and ease their pain by reminding them that their loved ones will one day rise again. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, many people grieve without hope that the message of, resurre of resurrection reach them and awaken faith in their hearts. Use us as your instruments to bring the word of life to their souls and the message of hope to their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, stay by the side of all who are suffering. In your wise mercy, heal those who are sick, receiving treatment for illness, recovering from illness or surgery, or hurting in body or mind. Remind them that your victory over death is a fact, and comfort them with your promise to raise them and give them and all believers new glorified bodies like yours. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Spirit, we praise you for the washing of rebirth and renewal you give in baptism. Please be with Malachi Bromstead, baptized this weekend. Give his parents, Luke and Megan, strength and faithfulness to raise him in your word. Use each of us to pray for and encourage all who are baptized in the saving faith.
And hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Risen Savior, feed our faith with the message of your resurrection. Come to us in your word and in the feast of your sacrament to sustain and strengthen us until we feast with you in eternal glory. Amen. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with hymn number 464. you to stand. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. 
Protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.